And there are signs today that say, drive carefully, school children crossing. Well, we have a pavement that looks like two cones. When the kid presses the button to cross the street, the pavement turns up like that, so no car can hit a kid. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Not a sign, be nice, be kind, be careful. <laughs> no, you build it in the city system. If your blood vessels dependent on you, you're going to go upstairs, there you speed up your heart, and you go upstairs. That's what an automobile is like today. They're very dumb. Automobiles that have no intelligence at all. If your car veers to the right, either your tire air pressure is uneven, or something's wrong with the steering wheel, but when some, a human being goes wrong, they put him in jail. There's something in the environment that made him that way. Well, what kind of environment would make a serial killer? There was a doctor named Worthy. Some of most of you have never heard of him. He wrote a book called Show of Violence, showing where, what makes these people the way they are. And here's what they found out about, same thing with Jeffrey Dahmer. You know who Jeffrey Dahmer was? He's the guy they cut off heads, put them in the refrigerator, ate them, went to bars, got another guy to come up to his apartment, he put drugs in their drink, and they'd pass out, then he cut them up. Now, Jeff, they said, what's the matter with this guy? Nothing's the matter with him. He was brought up in an environment that was warped. Now, let me explain that to you. When he was about three years old, four years old to be exact, uh, perhaps a little older, he was touching his private parts. His mother was an old-time Baptist, he said, you were in a burden in hell touching that part of your body. And that kid began to tremble. You burn eternally. You'll get the worst of Satan's treatment. And the kid was scared. And the mother said at two in the morning he was screaming. And she came in the room, he stuck needles into his genitals because he didn't want to go to hell. And he used to take minority kids into the woods and try to cut their genitals off to keep them from going to hell. What do you think they do when we get mad at the Japanese? They show you Japanese with crooked teeth, bayoneting a pregnant woman, and pulling the bayonet up, and this one goes up 75%. You have to show them as evil people to get a list with high. So that's all you do is you run movies and show Japanese gang raping a white woman in, the, in Samoa, wherever the hell. But they do that, and Japanese are just like us. Some are good, some are evil, some commit crimes more so. They're not that different. People aren't that different. They have the same kind of crimes all over the world. But what makes them that way? That's what this doctor wanted to know, so he can raise people with, without that type of experience, so they don't become what you call aberrant in their behavior. Aberrant behavior is generated. Now, uh, I'm, I can't think of the guy's name immediately, but, well, uh, it's Jeffrey Donner. He used to when he was a kid, he was a loner. And he'd pick up animals that were run over by a night truck. That was exciting to him. You know, there's some kids around 13 that know nothing about sex and the building catches fire. It's so exciting, they have an orgasm. And so, so they create fire to have an orgasm. And some men are brought up, like I said, in the South Pacific Islands, everybody walked around new at 65 years ago when I was there. I don't know what it's like today, too emotive. And I never saw a native stare at a female's body that was brought up where everybody walked around it. They swam nude when they were little kids. So looking at a female body had no meaning at all. They look at the girl's eyes when they talk to them. In this country, or any civilized world, so they're always looking at the tits, the butt, the belly, the legs, because the camera in Hollywood moves in on the cleavage line, you know. Then it moves out on a girl walking. If you say, well, you know how men are, that isn't how they are. That's how they're made by this culture. So when guys say, hey, get a load of that chick, they're talking about that culture. If you're brought up in the South Pacific Islands, nobody ever said, hey, get a load of that. Because they've seen nude women just every day. So it meant nothing. And if you try to sell them a picture, of a book with pictures of nude women, you say, well, what do I want with that? Do you understand that? So all of your attitudes are shaped by culture. And don't look at men as bad or good. That's the way they're brought up, okay? Now, there are some men that become excited if women are wearing under things before they have sex. I want you to wear lacy stuff. Where the hell do they get that from? Some movie or book or magazine. That's where they get it. So in the South Sea Islands, 
the natives made love on the beach sometimes. They didn't have to do it privately. And they stroked the whole person. That was two hands on the girl and stroked the whole person. They had no fetishes. There are no, no tit men, no leg men, no ass men. They stroked the whole female. Just as you stroke a dog. When you stroke a dog, you stroke the whole dog. You don't stop at the balls. You <laughs> stroke the whole dog. You know what I mean? When you deal with abnormal behavior, normal to what? Who sets up what normal is, or what right is, or wrong? In the Arab world, the guy may have 15 wives, and they all get along with each other. Here in this country, we have one wife, we don't get along. So, so they think their system is good. You can't say you should only have one wife. If nine wives want to live with you, if you don't force it, or nine men want to live, and you like that, that's fine. So long as you don't force anybody else into your value system. But there's no right, no wrong, no good, no bad. People are shaped by culture. If you learn that in the future, when you hold a book and you can't see the lettering, it'll become darker. And if you put it closer, the lettering will get larger. You understand? The books will be smart. So when you have medical books in the future, they'll be updated by laser beam. So instead of you getting a new magazine every month as to what's new, to be a section in your medical book that tells you what's new, unless you press hold if you don't want to change. When you walk out of your room in the future, the lights go out automatically. You don't need to turn them out. All the air conditioning goes off, and the electric companies won't like that at all. You understand? There's not a single thing you can do that somebody won't hate you for. A lot of people will hate me, not for the Venus Project, but what they think the Venus Project is about. They think it's about a lot of scientists in gray. You will work in Area D. You, Area K. That's what they picture. That's not the Venus Project at all. That's their own projections. If you want to know about the Venus Project, ask me about it. But there's no authority in, in it. And the doctors are responsible for the health of everybody. And if the health drops below a certain standard, they go back to school. They're not punished. Yes. We have a question here. Thank you. I have a question about uh, the things you say about the future. For example, if a scientist has one theory that will solve some sort of problem, and another scientist has another theory to, for the same problem, wouldn't that create conflict between the scientists. For example, Einstein has continuously had to defend his theories. Okay. All scientific theories are put to test. And they stop speculating about the, the Big Bang, that's how it all started. Some scientists believe that. But what was there the day before the Big Bang? And they say light is the only thing that has a constant speed. But they say light is attracted to the black hole, so it couldn't have a constant speed if it's attracted into the black hole. They say all matter is attracted to the black hole. So you see, scientists have theories, so you have in the book, it says, this is one theory, this is another theory, this is another theory, whichever you accept, or you say, I'm going to hold it in advance, I think it's too early to accept any of those points of view. We don't know enough about it. 